participants as well. And for you who are listening, you might, you know, when we are recording this, we are entering the colder months in Europe and it might feel like, okay, the summer was great and you had this energy and this fire and you're like, okay, how do I keep it going? How do I keep that energy in myself? Or you might feel like, oh God, I don't want to do more Zoom meetings. I'm getting tired of, you know, being on my, my computer and that isolation that comes with. No, let's face it. Our lives changed a lot this year in 2020. And sometimes if you're a very social person or if you've not been working online so much, it might feel a bit frustrating to be just, you know, sit on that computer over and over again. So it's also about how do I find that connection again and saying, I have the resilience and I have the the joy of showing up online. I have the joy of, you know, keep going throughout those months in my business and I want to connect with that. So this is for you, no matter if you are, you know, on that path and you want to keep that going and you want to keep that energy going or if you're having a, a moment of down and you're like, oh, it would be nice to have some support and some, some insight how I can get back to that feeling of connection in my business in alignment with everything I'm doing. All right, so let's jump right into it. I'm going to talk about three different ways that you can build resilience in your coaching business. And number one is reconnecting with your why. And you've heard it before. I mean, I'm not the first one talking about the why and the importance of why. For myself, when um, about four or five years ago, I was traveling in, in Bali and I attended this workshop about the 10 year vision. And uh, for me at that point, I didn't even know what vision meant and I didn't know what, why I should have a vision because I always kind of had, you know, I just went with the, with the emotional connection. Like I want to do this. I, I'm, I'm very, um, I've always been an entrepreneur, so I, I act on creativity. So I was like, why do I need the vision? Why do I need to kind of get stuck in an idea of what I'm going to do? So I didn't feel that, that need, but I still attended that workshop. And that workshop really literally changed my life because um, it was a free workshop in the cafe. wasn't something, you know, special at that moment. But the fact that I could write down, how would my life look like? in the upcoming 10 years and what is the feeling I want to have and I want to insist on that it's the feeling it's not like an action plan where people get very afraid that if I kind of have a 10-year vision then I need to have a checklist every day what I'm going to do and I have to you know, reach milestone it has nothing to do with that and the 10-year vision for me was an idea of like what am I creating for myself what really matters in my personal life, in my professional life? How do I want to go through my days? How do I want to, you know, interact with my family, with my friends, with my clients? How do I want to spend time with myself? How, what I want to eat? How, like all the things, like really the lifestyle design, what matters to me? And the 10-year vision, I realized, was more about what do I stand for? And I think with you know, everything going on um, as I'm recording this and in general, you know, if you're a traveler, if you are online business, if you are in the space of online business, there's so much things happening all the time that we might feel a bit overwhelmed with all the inputs. And what you need the most is that inner compass, that inner anchor of like, who am I and what does matter to me? And for me, the 10 year vision was a way to reconnect with what who is Daria? What are my values? What, what do I stand for? What's my mission? What do I really care about? And with that time, I developed my own 10 year vision because it was such an important tool to have that after those, that experience, I started to like kind of dig into it and I crafted my own that I've been using for the last four years. And you can actually find that in the worksheet below. You, you can just, you know, check out the worksheet and you will be able to print that and do it yourself. It's a free worksheet. I really want people to get access to it because it shifted my life. I want you to also be able to use that for yourself. And the 10 year vision, the one that you can print, the, the exact one is something all my clients uh, I tell them to do in the beginning when they start working with me. I always tell them to go back to your why because if you don't know the why, the first thing that will happen is that you get sidetracked. 
you say, oh, oh my God, I'm going to do this challenge or I'm going to do this email list or I'm going to do this printables. And then you just get lost in details instead of knowing why am I doing this? Why does this matter? Why do I care about that? So that 10 year vision is the why. That's the bigger purpose. It's so tangible when you get to know how to work with it. And I use it myself every six months. So this is the first place where the resilience comes because if I know my why, I know that those small things that are happening, you know, when someone is not signing up to your program or someone is, you know, writing you an email that you're, you know, or like a comment on YouTube that you don't like, or wherever that is, it doesn't matter because what really matters is what is the feeling that I'm creating? What am I working towards every day to be more home, let's say, in my own life? Because I designed it myself. I created this experience for myself. So that's the first thing I will really advise you to do. To kind of feel more that you have the inner compass that you are designing your own life because you will create the resilience because you know where you're going and you having a bigger picture of you know 10 years instead of having this short-term vision of a couple of months because sometimes let's face it some a couple of months can be rough but if you know where you're going you can get back on track and say okay it doesn't really matter if i had five people sending up to my webinar because long term that's what not, doesn't really matter in what in my life what matters is the lives that i can impact which leads me to the second one about resilience a way for me that has worked really well is to shift the focus from myself to the others so shifting the focus on me 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 oh my god what am i doing blah blah, blah and, you know getting me to my own head and instead saying who can i help how can i contribute how can i be of service and for my clients who know me and, you know, my community, we have people staying with us for years in our programs. Why? Because our mission is not to, you know, get someone into our programs and like, okay, now you're here. Our mission is to serve. Our mission is to contribute into their lives and be there and support them step by step. And for me, it's the same with my community. If you will listen to this podcast, it's not about me. It's about you listening to this. It's about you watching these videos. It's about how can I help you somehow with an insight, with something that, you know, kind of, oh, yes, that aha moment, or maybe something you learn in these episodes, something that's going to shift in you and going to create an effect, an action towards something better for yourself, something more aligned. So for me, being of service, being in my, you know, my, my focus shifted away from myself towards you, listeners, you what, who are watching, my clients, my community, my friends, my family. When I focus on the others and not myself, I have the resilience because I know how one life can be impacted by something we hear or see. I know how a mentor can be important, I know how a coach can be important, I know how that conversation, some moments when we meet with someone and they're like telling you something, you're feeling, oh my God, that conversation shifted in me. And I focus on that. And what happens is that when you focus on that, you get so much back. And there's one thing I learned from the Mind Valley community that is sugar cubes. And we went to an event where we had to write those small notes to others about what we cherish in them. And I keep those sugar cubes, but I don't, I extended that idea to having those notes to comments, to different, you know, testimonials, references, anything. And I keep that in the folder in my computer. And whenever I feel down, whenever I'm feeling like tired and I'm like, oh, I don't want to do this today, you know, because we all have those moments when we're working and like, okay, getting back into that energy, I check those sugar cubes i check that folder in my computer where i'm reminded of all the people that we impact with our work and you know what many times when you're doing things online you don't even realize how many people are listening watching hearing doing you know following your work because they maybe never say that 
and they come one year later and tell you, hey, I've been listening to this episode for two years and now I had the courage to reach out. And you realize, wow, so many people might not even mention that they're following your work. So it's about the others. And if you can connect with that feeling of contribution and feeling of who can I help serve, contribute to today with my expertise, with my presence, with my, with my way of communicating, with my just me being there with what I have. That builds resilience because you are getting so much back. If you're staying with yourself and you're talking about how can I get more money, how can I get more clients, how can I get more, 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 at some point you will not have that resilience anymore because it's empty. It feels empty. We are all people who want to, you know, if you, if you shift to contribution, and I'm not the ones, the first one speaking about that, Tali Robbins speaks about that a lot. If you shift to contribution and service, you will find more fulfillment in your work. You will find, find more joy because you're helping others and you're impacting, you're helping them to make a shift in their lives. And it's not you who are doing that. They are the heroes. You're just there to support them. But seeing people using your expertise, your, you know, your podcast, your emails, your programs, your coaching, and doing something with that is so fulfilling. And this is why I always insist of not getting stuck in the cave with the website. Get out and serve. Get out and serve because there is no perfection. Be where you are right now and do as much as you can to help the person in front of you. And that's already more than enough because you keep showing up and you keep getting better and you keep improving that's what's really important so that's number two shift your focus to service because if you're in service you're gonna see how that contribution is going to warm your heart and keep those comments and keep those you know messages from for later when you need them and always come back because those messages are true for those people that had an impact on you. So take it in and just nourish that heart space in you and say, wow, that's something I created. We created together and that was a connection and somehow that was an important moment for that person. So if I can do that more, how amazing, how amazing ripple effect can I create around me? And number two, uh, number three actually is about personalized routines. So we spoke about reconnection with your why and the 10 year vision that you can check out in the worksheet below. And we spoke about the shifting focus to service um, and with the sugar coop, something that you can put in your folder and screenshot and keep for yourself the moment that you need it. And the third one is the routines. And here's the thing, you don't need to wake up at 5 a.m. in the morning or you know, start your day jumping into an ice bath. That's what I, not what I mean. It's about finding out that moment that when do I feel excited? When am I, you know, what am I doing in my day and how can I do more of that? And starting to be more conscious how you're going through the day. If you're doing like email marketing, you're doing all this stuff and just ask yourself, well, am I actually having fun with it? Do I need to do it? Does it even matter? And if you can start saying more that if I do things that are exciting for me, but at the same time they're contributing other people's lives, then I'm hitting jackpot. This is the on moment. So look into your own life and see what moments in my day do I feel the most alive. And resilience is not about, again, pushing through. It's about finding what brings me energy in my business. That's why I work when, when we work in Momentum, my stage three program uh, with visionaries, we talk a lot about how can I, you know, they create more freedom in their business so they don't do things that are holding them back because it's not good for anyone if they're doing all the manual work and they're not delegating, if they're not creating automation in their business. So it's about... How can you reconnect with that energy that you have in you? Because you are, if you're feeling a bit off right now, if you're listening to this and you're like, oh, I have to push through because resilience has this you know, connotation, which is not um, for me the right one. It's about finding that what keeps me on. What is the energy that I have? How do I 
How do I nourish that? How do I cultivate that energy in myself? And how can you do that if you talk about more, you know, if you're a coach consultant? Most probably what you love doing the most, if you are a visionary, if you are, you know, in this because you love people, you love helping people and supporting them, what will make you feel more on, let's say, is being more with your coaches, so delivering your content, delivering your messaging, being out and then coaching your clients, coaching, you know, giving workshops, uh, giving, doing summits, doing podcasts, that kind of stuff are going to make you feel like you're alive because you are in your highest purpose. You are in your zone of genius. That's where you're feeling like, oh, this is where I am the best. This is where I feel that I'm contributing. Um, and if you're doing that, of course, you know, email marketing or, you know, design or anything like that feels a bit more like, well, now, right now I'm not doing what I love. So less of that and more of what you love and everything else start to delegate that. And then the second one that you want to do is to create space to enroll new people into your mission. Because if you have a mission and that's what you're creating with this 10 year vision is so when you reconnect with that, you know that there are more people who need to hear that message. So your goal is also to be out there and enroll new people into your vision to share that. And it can be for sales, you know, having clients joining your programs and sales can be beautiful if you come from the right place, helping people going through that journey and more committed journey. It can be about, you know, uh, connecting with your community online. It can be about being with people and being and sharing your mission with more and more people. That's the second thing that I want you to focus more on. And the third one is creating space to develop your expertise, to think more about what am I actually creating? What do I care about? What do I want to share with this world? And keep coming back to it and say, is there something else? Is there something deeper? You know, when I started off, I was doing LinkedIn and I love to, teaching LinkedIn and social selling because I love the idea of sales and, you know, enrolling people in a conscious and authentic way into your programs and supporting them. But I realized that there is so much more I can teach. I have 10 years experience in building a training, online training business. And I wanted to give that opportunity to people to join my programs and be part of something bigger. This 10 years experience, for me, LinkedIn was limiting my capacity to serve. So I realized that through this time of thinking that I need to expand it. I need to be able to give more of myself because there is more of me. And sometimes... The resilience is not about keep pushing through, but questioning yourself and coming back to what do I feel in everyday life that is making me feel more excited? Where do I feel more excited? Where am I feeling that I'm fueled in my work? Where do I get my energy? When do I feel on? And how can I create more of that? Because you might have moments when you have to, it actually is not never have to because you don't have to do anything, but you might feel like, okay, I don't have a team and I would love to have people joining my programs or I would love people to join my webinar. And then you are the one filling up and that might feel less exciting, let's say for you, if you are a visionary, most probably that's, that's the case. Um, Instead of feeling like, oh, I have to do it, think about all the moments that you are creating for yourself when you are in your zone of genius, where you're having fun. So if you are spending 80% of your time doing things that you really love in your business, then you will have the resilience and the commitment to do some a couple of things that maybe are less fun in the beginning. With time, you will delegate, especially if you're working with me, you're going to get to a point where I will tell you to start delegating and automating much more than in your business. But in the beginning, if you don't have a team and you don't feel excited, well, leave it for a couple of minutes or hours or maybe a day or so, or see if you can even stop doing that because it doesn't even make any difference in your business sometimes, the things we are doing. And see, is there another way I can feel more excited about this task? Or is there another way I can get there? Is there something else I can do? And then create routines in the day. So basically when I talk about routines, it's not so much about, you know, the ice bath or 5 a.m. club. It's more about routines to check in with yourself. Do I feel aligned? Do I feel that this 
task is fueling me and what can I do to feel more on, to feel more energized by my work. And then you start to practice that, you will see that you will have more energy and then with that energy comes more resilience. So it just becomes much more exciting. All right, so those are the three things I wanna share with you today. Let's come back to the three tips I gave you. I want you to reconnect with your why and check out the 10 year vision below so you can download that and actually do the, go through the work of, of uh, connecting with your inner compass that I call it. And then number two is shifting your focus to service. So being more in service and thinking more about how can I contribute to others than being in our own head. That really helps to keep going through any time because you feel the connection with your community. And the third one is start to create personalized routines to work with your own energy levels and how you feel more fuel in your work and be conscious with that and listen to those signs because it's not about pushing through or hustling it doesn't gonna help you long term it's about finding what feels more aligned and where do you feel better okay so please comment below what did you like the most from this episode share your own tips on how do you create resilience in your business in your coaching business would we'll love to hear from you and please of course tag anyone who needs to hear this sharing is more important in these times when resilience might be something that someone need to hear right now today and that you can help them with that so share comment like tag anyone and please let me know what you're getting from these episodes and until next time have a wonderful day